Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship at Blythe Road Baptist Church. Welcome to worship online for November the 12th. This morning, uh, we're talking about praise. We're asking the question, what or whom is worthy of your praise? And how is your praise going? We're looking at a psalm of praise, uh, Psalm number 145, and, uh, and seeing what God has to say to our hearts through the words of the psalmist. So let's worship together. There are two announcements that I'd like to draw our attention to for the rest of November. Uh, next Sunday, uh, November 19th, we're looking forward to welcome uh, our brother, Pastor Johnny Delise from the Community of Christ Disciples Church. He'll be here Sunday morning. Um, and then the following Sunday, November 26th, we're looking forward to the ordination service for our brother, Chaplain Mike Ariza, and that's at seven o'clock on the 26th. And we do hope you'll be able to come uh, out to that. As far as December goes, we'll be talking more about that uh, online in terms, of, uh, in terms of Advent and what's coming up. I'll just mention too, you can also go to www.blithwood.org and, uh, and, and our church calendar is, uh, is posted there as well. As we prepare to worship God, let's come before him in prayer now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we pray along with the psalmist and praise you. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable and we say amen and amen and father as uh, as we consider praise this morning of you we would ask that you would that you would quiet our hearts that you would give us hearts full of praise lord uh, even now that uh, that we would hear from you and that the praise that we offer to you father would spill out uh, into our lives into every word uh, into every deed so be near us now we pray father in jesus name amen amen Hear the call to worship. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all he has made. We're going to sing praise uh, to God now together with the hymn, Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet, uh, your tribute bring. So let's, uh, let's praise God in song. Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 145. We're going to read the whole psalm. So let's hear God's word. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. 
Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And this is the word of God. We thank God for the reading of it and for the hearing of it this day. Amen. We've been talking over the last little while here about some of the most meaningful questions that we can ask of ourselves and one another. And uh, it's good to, to ask these questions, to have these conversations. They're not conversations that you're going to have with someone you just met, generally, uh, although it's not out of the question. The Holy Spirit moved Philip uh, to come alongside a eunuch from Ethiopia one day and ask him a question. Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? And that led to a discussion, and they got into some deep discussion very quickly. So it's not out of the question. But we've been asking questions uh, like, in, in whom or in what do you hope? Do you hope in anything at all? In what or, or in whom do you place your faith? Or, or how do you define a good life? What makes life good? What makes a person good? How can I be a better person? What might, might make our world better? Do we ever consider these things? And we're not going to consider any of those questions this morning, directly at least. But the question we're considering this morning is one of praise. Do we ever consider praise? We're considering praise today, to praise, to honor, to laud. And, and laud simply means to praise publicly. There was a song of my youth it's, it's a different context, but, but the message is much the same. A song of my youth went like this. Uh, we've come a long, long way together through the hard times and the good. I have to celebrate you. I have to praise you like I should. So the question I want us to consider this morning is what or whom is worthy of our praise? Who is worthy of our praise? And if our answer is God, if we're going to say God, then how is our praise going? What might we learn from this 145th Psalm? And how might it affect our practice of praise to God, both as individuals and together? So let's come before God in prayer as we look at this Psalm and ask for God's help as we listen for God's word to us this morning. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. When it comes to matters of prayer and praise, we do well to look to the Psalms. That prayer that I just prayed, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that comes from one of the Psalms. That comes from the 19th Psalm. There are 150 Psalms. There are 150 songs that made up Israel's song and prayer book. They made up Jesus' song and prayer book. And so we do well to turn to them when it comes to prayer and when it comes to song. We do well to turn to them when it comes to praise. 
We talked last week, we, we, we heard about the idea of living doxologically. In other words, living in such a way that the praise that we do together of God, that our honor of God, that our adoration of God, it spills out into our lives. We ask the question continually. We always have the question before us, how then shall we live? How then shall we live? What does grace call for? What does mercy call for? What does the love of God call for? in every situation and any response that we give and that we make to that question needs to be rooted and grounded in our praise of God and so we sing we sing praise God from whom all blessings flow and we're not just here to talk about praise of course but we're here to practice it together so I invite you to sing along with us in the Blythewood Chorus as we praise God together now in a most traditional way. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. This is what we read in the second verse of this psalm. And I have to say the concept of praise is contained in the very word for psalm. In Hebrew, the word for psalm is tehillim. It means praises. And we're looking at Psalm 145 this morning. And this, this is the start. The psalms end with six psalms of praise. And this is the only psalm that's introduced as to heal and praise of David. If you have an NRSV Bible, and your Bible may reflect this, but at the top of the psalm it says praise to heal him of David. Uh, the Talmud had this to say about the psalms. Everyone who repeats the Tehillim of David thrice a day, so three times a day, everyone who repeats the, the Tehillah of David may be sure that he is a child of, a, of the world to come. Being in the Psalms changes us. And, and I would expand that statement in the Talmud. I would expand it out to include every kind of Psalm, not only Psalms of praise, but all the Psalms, whether they be Psalms of thanksgiving or Psalms of confidence in God or song, songs of lament. Being in them, repeating them, singing them will change us. In the first few hundred years of the church, early saints, or early, early church saints, they wrote of the sin of acedia. And it's not a word we hear very often. It's a Greek word, acedia. It literally means without care or concern. Uh, later on, it, 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 it became translated or known as sloth, with no disrespect to sloths, the animals, of course. But, but it goes beyond mere laziness. It, it describes a sort of spiritual apathy spiritual listlessness, spiritual inertia, a resistance to spiritual practices, prayer or devotional practices or worship together. Someone has described it like this in practical terms, this meaning acedia, it looks like indifference, boredom, avoidance of responsibility, self-indulgence or sluggishness. It feels like discouragement, being unfocused, withdrawn, jaded, hopeless, irritated and worthless something we need to watch out for. Acedia, it can manifest itself in laziness or it might manifest itself in constant frenetic activity that keeps us distracted or, or, or mindless distractions. We want to take this Christ following life seriously. This is what we said throughout those weeks of being in First Peter. Acedia is something that we need to be on our guard against together. It's been said that, that the cure for acedia is prayer and psalmody, singing the psalms, praying the psalms. It has an effect on a person. It does a body good, as the ads for milk used to say. It just does. And so we say, sing praise, and we sing, sing praise, sing praise. And the psalm starts in verse 1, I will extol you, my God and King. This is how the psalm starts. And let us pause and consider what the psalmist is saying here. 
I will extol you. I will exalt you, my God and King. I will lift you up. You are worthy, O Lord, to be lifted up over everything. <clears throat> Which may lead us to the question, why should we praise God? What is all this stuff about praise anyway? And you may hear, and you may not, but you may hear people say things like, well, God must be very needy if God wants us to be praising him all the time. To which I would simply reply, let us not be foolish about this, dear family. Let us not be foolish about this, because here's the thing. God is in all. God is through all. God is above all. And it is fitting and right and proper for us to offer our praise to God every day. As the psalmist says, forever, every day, I will bless you. What does it mean for us to bless God? It means simply to praise. It means to tell of who God is. Not because God is needy, but because God is our delight. Because God is our delight. And this delight needs to be expressed. When we are delighting in something, we need to express that delight. C.S. Lewis, he put it like this, talking about delight and delighting in God. Our delight is incomplete until it is expressed. It is frustrating to have discovered a new author and not be able to tell anyone about how good he is. To come suddenly at the turn of the road upon some mountain valley of unexpected grandeur and then have to keep silent because the people with you care for it no more than for a tin can in the ditch. Which makes us wonder about his traveling companions. To hear a good joke and find no one to share it with. We need to express our delight. We need to share our delight with others. We get this. We like to share things that delight us, don't we? And our delight needs to be expressed to, to be made complete. And our delight in God is made complete in its expression. So how is our praise going? How is our delight in God going? Do we choose to do this? Do we choose to express our delight in God? The psalmist most definitely does. And he affirms his desire to communicate his delight. Verse 2, again, every day, he, he says, he sings, I will bless you. Because remember, these are songs. And praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Now, I realize here I'm talking a lot about songs and singing. And you know that songs and singing and music is very important to me personally. But I must say, I'm, our praise of God doesn't need to be sung necessarily. It can be spoken. If you're not that into music or musically inclined, our praise of God can be spoken. We can pause at the beginning and at the end of our day. We can pause in the middle of our day and say something like, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And if you'd like that, we printed, we printed out little bookmarks in the summertime. Uh, if you'd like one of those, get in touch with the church office and we'll mail you one. Keep that in front of us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it, is, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And praise God that way. There's a personal aspect to praising God. There's a personal aspect to acknowledging before God that God is above all. God is above all because God is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. We use images to help us because the greatness of God is so unsearchable we can't even express it properly but we try and we use images and we sing things like your love O Lord reaches to the heavens your faithfulness to the clouds your righteousness is like the mighty mountains your judgments are like the great deep to try and get our hearts around these wonderful truths his greatness is unsearchable his greatness is inexpressible but the psalmist does his best to express it and so do we we do our best I've always loved that line in Charles Wesley's And Can It Be That I Should Gain. We're going to sing this hymn at the end of our service. But there's a line in that hymn 
in which uh, we sing, in vain the firstborn seraph tries to sound the depths of love divine. In vain the, surf, the firstborn seraph tries to sound the depths of love divine. But I think there's a significance to our trying, no matter how meager it may seem, or no matter our, our musical ability or gift. There's a significance in our trying, and I think that God shares in our delight. I believe that. I believe God shares in our delight. Because praise is meant to be shared. And we see this in the next section of the psalm. We've talked about individual praise. And there's there being an individual aspect to praise. There's an individual decision to respond to who God is and what God is doing and, and, and what God will do. But there's also a corporate aspect to praise, which simply means there's something that we do together when it comes to praise. And in verse 4 we read this, One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. There's an evangelical aspect to praise, and by this I mean there's a sharing of the good news of Christ. There's a telling of the good news of Christ in our praise, which is generational. There is a declaration, there's a proclamation of God's mighty acts in praise. And there's an invitation in praise for others to join in. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship and bow down, as another psalm goes, Psalm 95. And so let us praise God together and let us make sure that we're praising God with one another. Both individual and corporate aspects are shown here in our psalm. If we look at verse 5, it's verse 5 goes on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your, and on your wondrous works I will meditate and then in verse 7 they shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness so we have both going on here and I have to say our praise of God is not only to delight in God's greatness and to express our delight but it's to delight in and make known his goodness is to make his goodness known. God is good. God is good. And let's just stop with that for a few moments here. Because I know it can become a bit of a bumper slogan, a, a bumper sticker type of thing. A slogan, I meant to say. A slogan or a bumper sticker type of thing. God is good. May it never lose its meaning, though. May it never lose its meaning to us, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what our personal circumstances are. May that truth never lose its meaning. May it evermore come to have a deeper ma a meaning for us. Dear friends, no matter what our circumstance, what would it mean for us to believe that God is good? What would it mean for us to believe that God is good? How would we want to reflect that goodness? How would we want to reflect God's goodness? In praising God, we leave ourselves open to being changed by the one we're praising. We leave ourselves open to being changed by the one who we are praising in meditating on God's wondrous works. And the psalmist does that in verse 8. The psalmist goes back to Exodus 34 for his declaration about God in this second section of the psalm. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love abounding in hased that's that hebrew word has said that's translated steadfast love here in compassion in steadfast love in verse 9 the lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made the lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made and i simply ask of myself as well what would it mean if we believed that? What would it mean for us to believe that? What would it mean for us to take hold of that truth in the depths of our being that the Lord is good to all and has compassion over all he has made? What would it mean to us in terms of how we see people? What would it mean to us in terms of how we see creation? Because creation is involved in this praise business too. We've talked about praising God individually. We've talked about praising God together. And, and things expand out even further. And we read this. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. That's verse 10. 
All your works shall give thanks to you, and all your faithful will bless you. Someone once said, if these were silent, speaking of his followers, Jesus once said, if these were silent, meaning his followers, he said, even the stones would cry out, even the rocks would cry out. In praising God, you see, we're joining, we're joining in with something that one day all of creation will do. And of course, we get glimpses of it now, don't we? And we're thankful to God for these glimpses. We get glimpses of creation speaking of God's glory. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. In verse 13, we read, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. So this idea of praise is spreading. It spreads to all of creation, and it spreads through all time. We're talking about an enduring kingdom. This kingdom of which we are a part as followers of Christ, it's an enduring kingdom. And we get the idea of the, this enduring kingdom, again, by, by praying, by singing, by speaking, by reciting the psalm. Not long ago, I was singing Psalm 23. We were, we were, we were talking about the, the 23rd Psalm recently when we were speaking about shepherd leaders and the Lord is my shepherd and we were remembering our chief shepherd. We were speaking about the 23rd Psalm. And I was singing it recently. I was, I was playing guitar and I was singing it. And it struck me, I have to say, that here I was, named, I'm named David, and that I was singing a psalm of David and I was playing a stringed instrument like David. But I, I considered that before, but it struck me in a new way. Thinking about singing the same words 3,000, some 3,000 years later. Thinking about what they meant to the king, thinking about what they mean for me, what they mean for us, because of course we don't need to be named David or play a string instrument. We're all connected. That connection to the past that we have. And of course our praising anticipates the future as well. Speaking of enduring, praising God, when we praise God, we're joining in with that chorus that we hear about all over the book of Revelation, that chorus, that heavenly chorus that's praising God. When we, when we speak or sing praise of God, we're joining in that heavenly chorus that's, that's singing things like, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Their delight is in sharing with who God is as well. Their delight is also in sharing who God is, the Lord who is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. And as we keep on moving through the psalm, we hear something about what God's greatness and what God's goodness look like. This unsearchable, indescribable greatness and goodness. And there's a, there's a list. The psalmist starts to list things which start at verse 14. In terms of what God's goodness looks like, it starts with, 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 with God upholds. This is verse 14. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. He upholds and he raises up. Secondly, he provides, we read in verse 15, the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing he provides. We praise God for these truths. He's close. He's with us in verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. He's with us. But all the wicked he will destroy, which might sound a bit jarring. And if that last part of verse 20 sounds harsh, we need to remember, of course, that God is just. That God is a just God, and he won't let injustice stand forever. God will not let injustice stand forever. And this should be good news. He calls us to act against injustice too. He enables us to be part. God enables us to be part of his setting things right as we look forward to that day when all things will be made right. And as we look forward to that day, in the meantime, we praise 
And as we come to the end of the psalm in the 21st verse, we find that the psalmist both began his song with praise and he ended his song with praise. And the psalmist ends by restating the intention he started with. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Why? Because it is good and right and fitting, dear brothers and sisters, that we should continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, the lips, uh, the fruit of, the, of lips, rather, that confess his name. So let's take these words seriously together. These words are from the, the, the sermon to the Hebrews, Hebrews 13, verse 15. And let's take these words seriously. Through him, that is through Christ, then, through Jesus, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. And what is this fruit? This fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. And the song ends, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And dear friends, this is the praise in which we are invited to join. And I say, may this be true of all of us. May we all be joining in it particularly as we approach the season of Advent. The season is, of Advent is, is near, and that's a season in which we'll certainly be singing a lot of praise together. And may this assure us that we are indeed children of the kingdom. May this praise change us and cause God's kingdom to be known. And God grant that these things may be true for all of us. Amen. Amen. As we respond to God's word, we're going to sing again. Uh, the song is called Forever, and it echoes those words from Exodus 34. It echoes those words that we heard from Psalm 145. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. What a wonderful truth. So let's sing.
As we continue to respond to God's word, friends, we're going to come to God now with the prayers of God's people. So let's pray. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Be Father in the praises of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another, Father, and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, those in, our, in, in each of our circles of love and care. Grant, Father, that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you would comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope, Father, in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, whose greatness and goodness is unsearchable, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us, Father, to praise you and to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. As we stand from this time of worship, friends, we are going to sing. Uh, one final time, uh, a, a hymn, another hymn of praise, which speaks of, of wonder and awe. We mentioned it already this morning. And can it be uh, that I should gain? So let's come. Uh, let's come with wonder to God now as we sing.
As we go from here, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go now in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.